Welcome to the channel. Today we have a Dell Precision 5540 mobile workstation. It's a workstation that's got plenty of graphics processing power, so it could be a replacement for a desktop version. The specs on this one are, the basic specs are, it's got an Intel i7 uh, 9th gen processor, 6 core, 2.6 gigahertz. You can get i9s and, and Intel Xeons, costs a bit more. Uh, it's got a 16 gig DDR4 RAM, upgradable to up to 64 gigs, M2 one terabyte SSD, PCIe, NVIDIA Quadro T1000, 4 gigs DDR5, 15.6 full HD display, you get an UHD as well, and there is an option for a touchscreen. The weight is around 1.78 kilograms, which isn't too bad uh, considering the, the size of the screen. Uh, it's I think it's something that will fit in most people's bags. Let's dive into the uh, review. The keyboard's, or the keyboard's got a backlit display. I, I like the keyboard uh, feel, it's very clicky. Uh, the surface over here is a bit rubberized, so it will leave uh, smudge marks if you've got oily, oily fingers and things like that. The touchpad is nice and clicky as well. The power button is over here. On the right hand side, it's got one USB port on the right hand side and a memory SD card reader. On the left hand side, it's got your charging port, uh, another USB, HDMI and USB type C. The webcam and the microphone are right on the top. For charging, you've got your standard Dell adapters, which is this, with that, the skinny version of it. Now Dell's got, uh, Dell has uh, docking stations that connect via USB Type-C. I I was a fan of the Dell port replicator. It was robust. It stood for, it lasted for a very long time and we had very little issues. With the USB Type-C uh, connectors for the docks, they are a bit finicky, flimsy, and they tend to bend very quickly. I'm not sure why everybody's going towards this. I like. I understand the data transfer rates, but the form factor of the pins being really, really small and thin is an issue in the long run. All right, let's go to uh, do a, an audio test. It doesn't have a great uh, speaker, but but it's loud enough. And for the display, it's got You can see CPU has got six cores over here and with the graphics, yeah, NVIDIA Quadro. I'm just going to load up a PowerPoint and things like that. It's not PowerPoint, sorry, um, Photoshop and see how that runs. That loaded pretty quick. That's probably that's because it was preloaded. Let's run it again. Yep. So you can select uh, what applications uh, run using the NVIDIA graphics or the default uh, 
inbuilt graphics uh, card over here. So for that, you just go, you can set your options over here and you get your base profile and you can select your preferred graphics processor, high performance NVIDIA processor or integrated graphics. Uh, occasionally the fan will run uh, and it'll be a little bit loud, but I guess with a processor and a dedicated graphics card, it, it needs to cool itself. Oh, there we go, under program settings. So under program settings, you can have a look at all the programs that you have loaded that are comp uh, and you can select what, which graphics card is used to run this. My global setting is set to uh, NVIDIA GPU uh, you can hard code it to high performance NVIDIA processor, or you can say, you know, integrated graphics. For example, you want to run Word, Excel, and stuff like that. You probably say, I'll oh, just run integrated graphics. And if you want to run things like Photoshop, InDesign, Premiere Pro, then use uh, the NVIDIA processor. So you get can use a lot of that power. Yeah, overall, I think it's nice, uh, and yeah, time will tell. Time will tell how it does with all the editing work that we're going to be doing. Uh, all right, so if you have uh, set your graphics to, you know, the setup of your graphics to run certain applications using certain graphics cards, that's fine. But if you want to do something on the fly, then the best way to do it is uh, go to the program, for example, in this case, you can't right click and do anything from here, but let's have a look over here. So let's, let's have a look. So if I look at, for example, Premiere Pro, so right click. Oh, that's not good. Adobe Premiere Pro, right click, open file location. And then you can say, you know what, right click and run with graphics processor, and then you can select the graphics processor, or you can change your default graphics uh, processor. So in this case, I'll say run with graphics processor. That's my default anyways. And let's give that a crack. Loading, loading, loading. And let's have a look. Here we go, there's a spike, and new project. Okay, and you can see it is using that graphics processor. All right, if you do decide to open this up, uh, you'll have to open up, uh, unscrew 10 of these screws. You'll need a Torx screwdriver don't use a phillips or anything so you'll destroy it uh, you'll destroy the head and another thing is that you have two more screws to remove and you will need a phillips head screw uh, driver to remove that don't try to force remove it or force open it you will destroy everything so be careful and be patient all right now we have opened up uh, the back panel and what do we see we see a uh, two fans assuming one is for the processor and the other one is for the graphics card you got two uh ram slots over here good if you want to upgrade yeah they're not integrated uh so you can remove and change them it's got your your ssd over here and it's also got an option to add a 2.5 inch drive uh, the only thing you'll need is you'll need a ribbon connector to connect this to your drive I like this. The fact that you can add more drives, uh, fantastic. Also got a uh, 56 watt hour battery. So if you need to change that is removable. I, I really like if you, the fact that you can open it up and you can remove parts if you need to change it. You know, I hate it when everything is sealed up. So you can't have a look at it. If you lose, if something happens to the device, your hard drive is in there, you lose your data as well. And, and big companies don't care about your data. They just care about swapping and stuff like that. So yeah, this is fantastic. Oh, and there's something that I forgot to mention is that the device does come with a USB type C 
to Ethernet adapter. Thank you, Dell. This is helpful to people who still, you know, connect to a wired connection. All right, so that's the end of this uh, review. If you, if this has been of any help to you, uh, do give it a uh, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll try to put out more videos. Thank you.